Um, hello, I'm Cathy. I'm a PhD student at Exeter University in the UK. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about our research. Um, we look at how do businesses perceive and understand climate change. And um, we have been doing this for the last um, two years. And I want to start out with um, one of our findings, which might be a bit shocking to all of you, but um, I'll clarify that towards the end of the presentation. And it says there's no need to communicate climate change science to businesses. And let's take a look at what we did. So why do we look at how do businesses perceive and understand climate change? Well, um, we have scientific consensus on climate change. We heard that the last two days at this conference. And um, even though climate change has been acknowledged from the business perspective, and we talk about economic, social, and environmental impacts, um, still cl businesses haven't really understood climate change, and they, they, they find it very diff difficult to engage with climate change in a meaningful, profitable, and sustainable way. So my research interest, or our research interest, is um, to find out how do businesses then approach the knowledge gap between climate change and business practice, um, how do they perceive and understand climate change? And also then, what can we learn from that? How, what are the factors that hinder and promote climate change engagement by businesses? And why is that important? Well, that's important because if we know what the factors are that drive business engagement with, with or um, against climate change, um, climate change we um, can improve communica communication and also very important um, that is for the low carbon economy and also for the individual businesses. So what we have done is actually, um, this is really social research. We went to businesses that try to engage with climate change that say that they want to engage with climate change and we um, monitored them for a period of almost two years and we spoke to them regularly to see how, and how they perceive and understand climate change. But then on the other side, we um, looked at organizations that communicate climate change to businesses. And I have to say this research is um, located in Cornwall, which is a county in the southwest of the United Kingdom. It's uh, economically deprived and almost all the businesses are small and medium-sized enterprises. So all the businesses have less than 250 employees. Um, so basically, we tried to look, find all the organizations and all the institutions that try to communicate something on climate change. Um, we identified about 13. That includes the local council. And um, what we did over those two years, we um, went into all kinds of events that try to communicate um, something about climate change to businesses. So I basically sit in there and take, out, take notes what people communicate. And then after that, I ask the businesses that attend these meetings, what have they actually understood about climate change and how have they perceived it? Um, what else we did is the second point, we went to internal business meetings and business meetings that are kind of informal, where businesses come together to talk about the low carbon economy, to talk about anything that has to do with climate change. And I see, I look at what what is the role of climate change? Is climate change even anything to do with what they talk about? And then I picked these people, I picked these organizations, and we did about 67 interviews with um, business leaders, so decision makers in those businesses, and decision makers in those organizations, the people that um, decide what they want to communicate to those businesses. So we spoke to lots of people from the council, for example, as well. And another step that we took is we took our findings and we took that actually back to the business community. So we did two workshops and we invited all of, my, all of our business leaders to come and join us and reflect on what we identified about climate change and what matters to them. And we made them talk about um, why they care about climate change and why they struggle to engage with climate change. So what are the results? Well, the results are very interdisciplinary. And we have three major themes where I can group our um, findings into. And uh, that has to do with communication, obviously, but also with economics. And we identified an economic cluster on climate change. And it also has to do with leadership. And I'm, I won't be able to talk about all these findings today, but I'll try to focus on communication. And it also has to do with new economic thinking. But I think that is, um, I'll mention that briefly later. So what happens if I look at communication to businesses? 
Well, I speak, we speak about climate change, and in our research and our studies, we speak about climate change, but we identify that actually businesses don't speak about climate change, even though they think they engage with climate change. So they speak about anything that has to do with climate change, and they rely, to climate change, they relate money, they, something very strong, they relate the government, they think that climate change has something to do with um, information, with funding, um, with carbon, with the communities, with knowledge, with something that needs to be, be approached together. So very, very many different things. And I brought you um, a couple of quotes, and I just want to point out a couple of them. Um, so on the top one, one of our interviews said, climate change is too big, it's too scientific to digest. Sustainability is in chunks and it gives businesses focus. And the other two um, quotes say, Climate change is scary, whereas low carbon is something I can work with. And then someone else said, climate change communication lacks a business perspective. So these businesses can actually verbalize themselves that they try to engage with climate change, but actually climate change they can't really understand. It's too scientific for them. Um, and they understand it, for example, with low carbon or sustainability. Another thing that we found in that communication is that Businesses find that climate change communication has no direct impact to their day-to-day -day business, that it's not countable in business terms. Um, it's very unclear for them what carbon reduction actually means for, their, um, for the environment. And it's also not um, it's too, too far away from the um, planning horizon. And therefore, they try to interpret climate change with sustainability or energy savings or low carbon. But then also the other side, if you look at how climate change is being communicated, there's also a problem for them. They find that there are too many players who try to talk about climate change, so they don't know who to trust, they don't know where to look for information, they're just confused. Another thing that they point out, point out is that um, there's no direct support from the government and the local council. They feel very much left on their own with wanting to do something about climate change. And they feel that there is an uncertain nature about legislation, so they don't know if they can even trust the government on legislation because legislation on the UK seems to come and disappear in terms of climate change. Um, yeah, so these are the major findings in terms of communication. What then happens is businesses try to understand climate change and as we just saw, they struggle. What they then do is they talk to each other and they, in Cornwall we, have, we identified an economic cluster of um, climate change and that means that there's a geographic concentration of businesses that come together and talk to each other and they talk to certain people in the council and therefore they all have kind of the similar information but then that also means that they don't get information that is new and that comes from the outside so anything that is developed new struggles to get into their business um, relationships and what that also means is that businesses look amongst each other and look to their in, um, immediate partners for information because that's the people that they trust. So they don't read the IPCC report, that's actually one of our research questions, that are one of the questions in the interviews, they, they hardly know what the IPCC, IPCC report is. They rather want to go to their neighbor and ask them, oh, what have you done about climate change? How does that affect you and how does that work for you? Um, the problem with that cluster is, however, that it doesn't really work and perfect information is not there yet, so there is a big lack of um, information for them. Another issue that we found is, okay, so if these businesses really try to make a change and they even talk to their peers and they talk to other businesses to find out what climate change means to them and to um, understand the climate change information that is being communicated to them that they don't yet understand, then we want to know why do they do that? Why do they have such a strong interest in that? And one of the obvious things is that we, th we would probably think, oh, it's all about profit maximization and um, minimizing risk. And that's one of the things that businesses say at the beginning. They say, yes, actually we do that because it saves us money and because we want to prepare, be prepared for the future. Um, but then if you ask again, how do you know that? How do you know that you, you can save money? Then they actually say, oh, and um, they point to their business decision maker, so the business owner, the CEO, the business leader. And what we find in those businesses, in our case study, that want the businesses that want to engage with climate change, they do that because the business um, leader seems to have a personal conviction on climate change. And that's where it gets really interesting. So we can actually see that climate change, even for businesses, is a social debate. 
And um, then we also took a look at what, how is that personal conviction defined? Where does that come from? And we identified um, four major things. So um, those business leaders seem to have a very strong regional identity with Cornwall. So the region that I just showed you earlier on the map, they feel really close to that region. And I feel that that nature, the beaches, the water is under threat. And so they want to do something about that. Um, they seem to have a very basic education on climate change, but that's very important. So they do know something about climate change. They don't know the um, deep science, but they do understand the basic idea of climate change. Um, another two things is they have experienced changes over the last um, years, and we, yeah, thank you. They have experienced changes over the last years, and they can see that their business had to adapt, and especially the agriculture or tourists. Uh, tourism industries seem to have realized that they adapt every year to a changing climate. And then one of the major things as well is that these business leaders seem to have a different approach to doing business. They really want to do something good and they feel really responsible for the environment but also for the economy and the society. And you can take closer looks at those businesses and they seem to have different um, business practices. But what is so interesting about this is that we can learn that actually we need to focus on, on things that are important for people, even in the business community. And um, what does that mean? So four major things, um, four major um, conclusions, really. Personal values of business leaders decide for, for or against the engagement with climate change. Um, there's no need to consistently communicate climate change science to businesses. Small and medium-sized enterprises actively create um, formal and informal knowledge networks, so they try to overcome that knowledge gap um, that exists between business practice and climate change science. And um, those businesses that do that seem to have a different kind of economic thinking. And what can we then learn from that? Well, there is no need to communicate climate change science to businesses, but what do these businesses then need to know? Well, if you look at what I just told you, then you can look at those three gray bars and actually think about, oh, if there's personal conviction, then, you know, and look at that, um, how that personal conviction is defined. People really want to know regional impacts. They want to know how their region and how things that they love are going to be affected. They also want to know financial benefits. They do play a role at a, at a later stage. So it's still businesses that try to, um, be sustainable in a financial sense, so financial benefits need to be communicated as well. But also very important, what I call the feel-good factor, so we need to be very clear on what the changes are that you can actually make when you engage with climate change as a business, and really emphasize also what that, how that is beneficial for the economy and how that is beneficial for society. Um, I have to say, very important, uh, um, these are things that need to be communi communicated, but government plays a cru crucial role, role. So all the um, business leaders identified that they want governmental leadership, that they feel left alone with their convictions and what they want to do, and that they feel confused about a government that is not engaging with climate change and that they feel really frustrated and they want to have strict regulation. And I know that very often we believe that businesses don't want regulation, but something that businesses really don't want is uncertainty. And then at the bottom here, you can see that I wrote knowledge sharing. And knowledge sharing is very important because businesses don't want to be told what they should be doing. They need to learn from each other how climate change actually affects them and what that means for them. So, um, yeah, that's just what, how we can kind of bring that together. And um, so what I really want to say is know your new audience. Even in the business um, community, you have to be aware that economy is changing and thoughts are changing. And it seems that current climate change communication that is happening, for example, in the UK, seems to be behind on that. We always try to focus on, on the science and we try to focus on profit maximization, but that's really not about, that's not what it's about. So um, scientists do not need to communicate to businesses, but they need to provide um, regional impacts. And I know that's very difficult, but that's really what um, decision makers want to see what, how their regions and how their business are, are being affected. Um, yeah, that's really the, the overall conclusion, I would say. Uh, and yeah, this is just what we found so far. And um, 
Let's see what the last half year will bring. Thank you very much.